So, uh, thanks for being here for the last session of the Safety Critical Software Summit. It's nice that still a bunch of audiences here on a Friday afternoon. It's not typical, I guess. So, uh, yeah, before I jump in, normally I have a short shout out to my employer, which was, we're not yet there, not good enough. Okay, better do it like this. This is better. <laughs> we take it in this way. Good. So first of all, a short shout out to my uh, employer. So I'm at Bosch and I want to say thanks because I'm working in an embedded Linux IoT project where we make use of a bunch of open source projects. So I say once thanks to all the communities which are making this possible and also thanks for Bosch for sending me here that I'm able to talk about some parts of my work. What we do with all these projects is like we're bringing them in very different product areas. And I also like to highlight this because not everybody is aware what Bosch is all about. So something about the fridge or other parts, some about the automotive, but we really go into very, very different areas. And all of these areas include Linux. And some of them also in safety critical context, some of them have to run for 10, 15 years and so on, so long lifetime. And yeah, so this also makes it attractive for us to work with Elisa and to give a few words about me. So I'm uh, Philip Armand, as you could already see. I am currently technical business development manager, and it's a long title, but basically I take care that more Bosch engineers can work on open source, get in touch with open source, that open source gets spread inside Bosch and try to foster collaboration with communities inside Bosch and so on. Beside that, I'm the technical steering committee chair of the ELISA project, so that's also why I try to place some update or outlook session and more generic part on this. In other words, I just came from a Linux meeting, but there's the Linux Foundation Europe Advisory Board, where I'm also a member in the Linux Foundation Europe founded last year during the last Embedded Open Source Summit or Open Source Summit in Dublin. That's where I'm also a member generally on Linux. I started my Linux journey not as early as some others, which may sit here, just start around 2005, six time frame, where I was setting up uh, Linux PCs for exchange students and when I was studying in Sweden, they couldn't afford their own laptop, didn't have a notebook or so, so we used old PCs from the university and brought them to the students so that they had something to serve and work from home at this time. And we did this on a Ubuntu 6.10, I guess. Right, for automotive perspective, that's a little more than 12 years. Uh, we brought Linux into the car with infotainment devices. Navigation device at first was a 2.628 kernel, I guess. Uh, there was nothing about secure boot at this time, right? So if you, if you search good enough, you will find how to hack these devices. These days it's different and we take a lot of care of this. Um, I put the apertus on this, this is our distro, but it's not the one which is in the system at this point of time where the plain Yocto usage of this. And now we come to the real topic, the Elisa things. And I start typically with a little bit of disclaimer, uh, saying what is Linux in safety critical systems. If you see some other slides or have seen a session before, it's basically the housekeeping things for Elisa, so to always mention it. And what I want to shout out here is that if you see and look into a system and whether to assess if a system is safe, this means you need to require the system sufficiently. And in this system, you may find a Linux part of it. So the Linux itself is not the full system, as you may judge, but it's just in the system context of a wider system. And you need to understand how this Linux system, or this part of the system, is used in there. And by this, you will see there are certain parts which may be relevant, others are not. So you need to select which Linux components and features are there and which are safety relevant, which may not be safety relevant, which is the core of all the activities. And when you look at this, I'm pretty sure we will identify gaps, because if there wouldn't be gaps for Linux in use in safety critical system, we would have already done it. Right. What makes it hard for Linux is um, that it differs quite a lot from a traditional safety critical operating system. A traditional safety critical operating system will be certified. It was taken one software version. It comes with a very small footprint. It fulfills a lot of standards. It may have hard real-time capabilities. The real-time is making a good step forward. Not everybody says it's hard real-time, and I agree. So the Linux kernel RT patches will not guarantee hard real-time in any case. But we have real-time in there. Um, 
But the traditional systems also face some challenges. If we see uh, coming from automotive background, we have these software-defined vehicle environments, if you like the word or not, but still it will happen that you have virtualization involved, containers, arches next to each other, multiple VMs running. And if you want to put all this only with a certified artist, you may have hard times. And even just bringing art, using an artist and a hypervisor in there to scale on high performance computers, it may be that your safety, safety certified OS, which was prepared for chip environments 10 years back, does not fulfill your memory demands, your cache demand, and all other things. So you will face a lot of challenges. And suddenly Linux becomes very attractive because you have a rich ecosystem, you have strong community support, you will find drivers, you can discuss things open, but you have to take the challenge of, well, get somehow to a point of certification, getting it robust and reliable enough. And that's where we work in ELISA. And to say this clear, we are not safety certifying a Linux. We want to enable others to, with the right tools and so on, we see it in the mission shortly to enable them. So I come with like the legal disclaimer, we have collaboration, or a path for collaboration, but we also have things we cannot do. And the things we cannot do is like, well, we don't make your system safe because we don't know your system, right? You have your use case in mind, you have your obligations, you need to see where to use it. And if I take it like a security part, you need to, if from a security perspective on Linux kernel, if you have C groups, namespaces, other things in there, you need to know how to configure it. Just because it's in there, it doesn't mean that the feature is used properly. And when we describe processes, guidelines, and so on, that's also something that you have to take care of on your own. We cannot directly, because we deliver something to be open where we don't get any, or sometimes not any feedback on this back. Uh, we will not have an out of three module. We really try to keep up with the mainline speed because there are continuous improvements. This may be a bridge to the traditional way of thinking about safety, about certification. But there are so many things going better. And just because there are more bugs in this kernel than in the 4.14 kernel, it doesn't mean that the 4.14 kernel is better than the one now. Uh, yeah, and you remain responsible for a lot of things. Nevertheless, we find enough partners, even if we have these limitations, which support us in this mission, which bring things in. And we have some premium members, which are like from aerospace recently, but also Red Hat, who is really strong in driving activities. So also Red Hat in vehicle or as a lot of automotive parts in there and um, spread all over the world. We get a little bit of associate members. This basically means they don't pay for the membership, but they support us in the one or the other way. Like for automotive grid Linux, we have collaboration on the use cases. We use some of their work and also with CIP, which has long time support, stability, robustness, we all cooperate to a certain extent with them as well. Ozadel is mentioned because of the history. There was a Silto Linux MP project in there. And Elisa basically continued this with a little bit changed scope, but the idea remains. Right. All the different members subscribe to a mission. And this mission basically concentrates on the element processes, tools, documentation to make it amenable for safety certification. So we make life easier than we get things forward. We do this by set of horizontal working groups. Uh, the safety architecture basically looks into the Linux kernel. So more deeply looks at the subsystems, how subsystems are interoperating and so on. Try to understand how Linux is used for use cases. And this is a wide approach, not very bound to use cases, sometimes with a use case focus. And in a similar part, there's also the Linux features work group. And I mentioned the part of the example with C groups, namespaces and so on. This group really tries to figure out what is there, what could be supporting features for safety within the Linux system, or what could be something which breaks with safety. So if you switch this on or off or configure it in the wrong way, this could harm or benefit for safety. But it still remains on the product which you build, and you will bring expertise as an integrator to just bring this in. The tool investigation code improvement work group had a little bit different focus. It's the smallest group, more or less, and they set up um, some tools like syscaller, code checker, and so on, run it on the kernel. Um, it could benefit from a little bit more contribution use case focus. So we, if someone thinks you're very good in tools, uh, reach out to me later on. So here we are really actively looking for a larger path in there. 
And yeah, the OSEP, open source engineering process, this is more really on the process side, like how can you argue things, how, which analysis tools are possible within the Linux kernel. We use heavily the system theoretic process analysis. There was a Rafia talk from Coding this morning, which also goes in this direction by Paul Sherwood. He presented the work. Um, yeah, and the last is the systems work group. That's where, which is the group which I'm leading also here we try to bring all the different pieces together. So we put the things into a system and into a system context, which fits into the original mission, which we had. So to say, here's something you need to understand the system context. And normally this would be something which you put in a safety element out of context if you take the automotive language, meaning you have something which is not in context, but it doesn't work. Whenever you have an out of context, you always have an assumed context. Our assumed contexts are prepared by verticals. There's the newly founded aerospace work group. They don't have a use case yet. They just align with partners, looking for members, try to see where is Linux already in use, find commonalities uh, before they really drive into use case. And they're really open for everything from uh, yeah, thing from drones or so up to going into space, passenger flights and so on. Automotive, uh, you see the AGL old style instrument cluster in there. That's where we base on in the automotive work group. We work on the little danger sign there to look for warning signs, telltales, and see that they operate properly. That's our main use case. That's also what the architecture work group puts up. Mm -hmm. And the second one in there is the open APS. So this is from the medical device work group. It's a very nice one. It's an open artificial pancreas system. This was developed in the open. It uses standard components, but as the control of insulin is a very critical sensitive sim and highly safety regulated in the field of medical, these equipments are very expensive and many people suffer from it that they don't can afford such a system because of the high amount of cost for the certification. So what someone came up with was Dana Lewis. She put a uh, Raspberry Pi in the middle and let a uh, script run on it, and this script controls basically the insulin pump and the glucose monitor things. And by this, she gets a much better work, or a better, much better life quality. So she, uh, she was telling about improved sleeping quality because she's not waking up by an alarm at night and so on. And here the nice thing is, is really that everything is in the open. We could do analysis. We had outreach to community, and this is a little bit different to automotive, which is more a clocked and closed space. Still, as we were talking about the system before, if we see a typical architecture, it's not that every uh, element fits into all the parts. So mainly these two use cases, which you have seen, are in this more reddish middle part about the Linux. And we need to see how we get it further. And here also then the architecture work, the features work are mainly in the kernel, the code improvement also in there. Tools engineering process will move more on the surroundings of it. It's for the whole system environment, fits into every scale, and the use case just basically tailor our whole system. We do this work also in collaboration with other communities, which is quite cool. Um, so we reached out to Xen and Sapphire community because both have a safety critical pass. They have same challenges, they have different challenges, but at least it's a good room for collaboration because the room of open source and safety is a little bit limited. Um, especially for the automotive part, we see that the architectures are repeating and Sophie, Eclipse, SDV have also architectures which have of container involvement, virtualization involvement, RTOS in there. So we want to reach out to them as well and we reach out already. And we have also related communities like the Octo project which participate in the work. Uh, we have a special interest group for, it was an SPDX for safety. So uh, Nicole is working on it, she's here, Kate also. And we also reached out to Inaro already because also here a lot of the R maker section just fits in. And it always remained the idea of, uh, yeah, I like this. If, if you have an Apple and I have an Apple, if we change Apple, then we still both have one Apple. But if you change an idea and with me and I have an idea exchanging with you, then we both have two ideas, right? So that's basically the overall concept of this collaboration to just get the knowledge spread, get it wider, open, all these things. And we bring this into artifacts uh, these artifacts are split into various elements. This is based on the mission. We have elements, processes, tools, software parts. The working groups work with different extent on the different areas. So not everybody works on processes because it's more a generic thing and not every working group need to go in there. But we also have a bunch of activities and Namita Eliza, I will shortly mention the latest status which we have. 
uh, about the reproducible system, I give you a short insight, also workload tracing, which has been recently upstreamed, and the latest activities of Arts Linux. Other things are the SDPR and also this code checker call tree, and if you want to know about this, just check the ELISA YouTube channel, for example, then you will find old recordings and get more insight on this. All this is also documented, so it's on GitHub, GDocs, and in this presentation there are clickable links, so you just, if you download them, you can click on them and should be guided to the different artifacts. A few words about the automotive part, uh, just so that you're hooked up from the use case. We've selected this warning signs of an instrument cluster, uh, which could be the airbag sign or oil pressure and so on, because it was a nice and simple use case, but complex enough to put it under analysis. Uh, it has, for example, less real-time constraints, and it's easily reproducible. You can make a simulation out of it. So this is where we started, and therefore we had an extension, which is uh, still a work in progress. So there's the meta ELISA layer. It's not integrated into AGL. We maintain it locally in our GitHub. Uh, we share regular with AGL folks, but it's more there, and this is like seen as a demo setup where we can improve, where we can trace workloads, and so on. This was always a challenge for us to prove this and get this forward to different working groups, so or for also for people joining newly. So for this work, we really come to a flow where you can either start from a plain document, taking a step-by-step -step guide forward, or say I go with a Docker image rather than building things a full Yocto on my own. I can either enable it as state or not. I can even take a pre-made image of the QAMO and just boot a QAMO. And by this you can see and play around with the potential system. This is made in a very dependable way, which means each step of this queue depends on the previous one. So the Docker file depends on the GitHub documentation. It's creating the image, the GitLab pulled the image, which in the end means wherever there's some break in this queue, there would be an issue, we would see it and can trace it back to its origin. And we see, for example, the GitLab CI more like being a user. So the steps which are in the GitLab are basically the steps which are documented and pulled. So we hope by this we get more stable on the things. But this was all QEMO, and I said something about the reference system. This is something where it comes to real hardware. So we want to bring the work onto reference hardware. And for those who have been there on Wednesday, there was a talk by Thomas, a colleague of mine, and me. We were talking about our setup with Xen, Zephyr, and Linux. We currently bring it on a Xilinx XU. We tried with Renesas before. Um, and the idea is really that you can use the GitHub documentation later on, get all the artifacts, build artifacts, download the things, and reproduce something on your own. The XU hardware is quite expensive, so therefore we still look for an alternative in there. We have basically selected this hardware as the reference because of a good community support within the Xen community. And we will work on this, first of all, forward until someone comes with a better board because the idea is really to figure out something where I have at least two hardware, I have two different kinds of Linux in there, like here it's mentioned, uh, the Peter Linux and Apertis, but we also have AGL considered, so we at least have a Yocto and a Debian version in there later on, so this is for consideration, and we start with Zephyr, but we're also looking for an alternative artist, so that you get a skeleton at the end, where you can put whatever feature you develop into context, let it be safety or not, such that you just have something to learn about, right? So if you missed this on Wednesday, the slides are already online, and they get a you can access the recording, so take the chance. So it was a quite good presentation, which Thomas did there. The other thing which I'm very proud of is that we had from the medical devices where the SDP analysis was done, it reached to a certain level, so it's more like a systematic approach, drawing some boxes, and then at some point of time, the group figure out, oh, we don't get deep enough into this topic. We need to understand what's really happened in the subsystems of the Linux kernel, how things are, how does the workload look like, and there, uh, Shua and others did a great job of upstreaming later on this documentation. I think it was also Shefali, she did this. Um, she was a mentee within the Elisa project, and they did upstreaming of these guidelines into the user and admin guide. This is something which really try to do more that you as potential user of a Linux system in safety criticality can make use of these kind of things. The upstream part is more on the generic case with stretch and G, while um, the work of the work, of course, goes on the low level of the real workload use case. 
the continuation of this for the Linux features workgroup, also here in cooperation uh, between Ilana, she's leading the workgroup, and uh, Shua and some other members of Causal Workgroup to bring more RT documentation upstream because we see that the RT patches get mainline. It's close to all being done, but um, how to really use it, how, what to do, what to avoid, what not to do, what could cause problems. This is really documentation which is needed and they therefore have all the presentation this morning. Maybe a bunch of you have attended. If not, well, there's slides again later on and the recordings. And here they look into various kind of updates and this is really achievement which will go on and end up then in the kernel documentation. What we also have upcoming, this is quite a nice thing, is uh, the usage of Yocto or Linux in aerospace. So Boeing was presenting some work during the Open Source Summit in North America in May. And as we had such a great feedback on this and a large audience, there was a request to also have an extension of this presentation. So we plan in the middle of July a webinar. So uh, the date, maybe around the 18th of July, but there is no direct invitation or QR code which I could share here. For now, so maybe watch out the Lisa social or the mailing list, so it will be all announced there, so we'll make some promotion when it's there somewhere in the next weeks. Right. And yeah, like a pre-check, you can just search on YouTube to find the recording of it. The old recordings are all live. It's a very nice one to see also how Linux gets some responsibility in aerospace, although it's mainly not on a full safety level, it's more on the lower level of the standards. Right. Another thing which comes, which is not mentioned here, I guess this goes more towards September, we will also have a neighbor community webinar, so to say, so we will have some parts of the Xen project also in just explaining their path towards safety, how they deal with MISRA, how uh, their work differs from what we are doing, how the virtualization environment differs from the plain Linux, so this is something which will come up in September, again here, watch out to see it coming, yeah. One latest news, I guess that's a really new slide which uh, nobody most likely has seen because I've just prepared it last or beginning of the week. So there, I know there was, there was the deadline to submit everything on Monday, but this slide came in a little bit later. Uh, we had a workshop in Berlin last week with a bunch of new participants, new companies in there, and this was a really great chance to discuss where should the project go, which problems do we have, where do we see challenges, and one point which was mentioned there, we want to concentrate on the core of the core, how I call it. So we know everybody has a Linux kernel, but everybody configures it in a different way. Still, there are similarities in almost every system, and we want to go on and see what are these core components of a kernel, which all have in common, because there is most likely a strong safety criticality in there. Then. Uh, from our mission, you can see that there's elements, processes, and tools, but we also want to phrase a little bit clearer what this means. We don't have a good name for this yet. So if you're coming in automotive space, you know maybe about a safety manual, which gives you an instruction on how to use your system, and we cannot write a safety manual, so it's a question if it's an unsafety manual, or a safety how-to, or whatever. But at least what should go in there is like, what are certain issues in there, what are certain capabilities, what do we have to consider so that you get, uh, most likely it starts with a little bit of input and then it grows over the time that you get a guide, a document which helps you in understanding the usage of Linux and I'm pretty sure a bunch of this will also be in the user and admin guide then. So these are both related and what we also figured out that we will work better on our big picture document, the big picture document should help all those which are in the community to judge if the work fits, so if we're doing it in the right direction, but also for those now joining newly to the project um, to find a path, what is really safety critical part and what is the ELISA project just doing to get operating. So for example, we need to do certain processes in order to have good yeah, reviews, guidelines, and so on internally, but this is nothing which you would need to care of as an integrator or a provider of the system because you will bring your own processes and and there are other things which you may want to use, like our analysis techniques, but also this you may bring instead of an SDPA, an FMEA, FTA, whatever is your preferred method. And we want to clearly differentiate this and say these are the core parts of it. This is really from the kernel part. This is how we differ from uh, 
Sapphire from Xen, for example, this is what we have in common with the other communities. This will be in a big picture document because a lot of the people were asking for having it. And in order to prepare this also, we see that it's very good to interact with the other. We decided because we had SDV involvement in there and a little bit of Sophie involvement in the workshop as well, so Eclipse, SDV, and Sophie, we will take a meeting together with AGL and also line more on the work of systems work group that elements from the systems work group get into the project and that the other project bring in value in there so that we're not all reinventing the wheel. Well, this was the outcomes from the Berlin workshop as key takeaways. We have some more activities going on. What's in there, for example, is the SBOM generation for Linux. We have enabled already the SBOM generation. So in our CI setup, which I mentioned earlier for the automotive use case, where Sudeep was doing a very great job. So thanks a lot, Sudeep, <laughs> for it. Um, we will continue with it because it's not Linux in the system, and we know that system bill of or software bill of material and the system bill of material is very important. We want to get this in there and see how does it work with uh, Zephyr, how does it work with Xen, how do we get the things together, really properly automatically generated. Then we have this reproduction of Xen, Zephyr, and Linux, but it's not in a state that it's really robust and that you have it in a GitHub PR. We have a GitHub PR for the Renesas one, but we most likely don't get it into um, CI at the end. We want to get it first on the XU further and then have see a comparison of both guides, how things go on. So therefore, the documentation is something which will come up in the next months directly. Was once, as this is achieved, also the SBOM part will move on. So basically, the order is swapped here. Um, it should be moving on from a PETA Linux, from just a Linux, to really have all the chance to exchange your Linux into the preferred version of Linux. So that you can say, I'll say I'm a Debian guy, or I'm an Yocto guy, or I would like to go in between with some part of one or the other, but at least the system should work with all of them. And also this opens new domains because the AGL and Apertis are more in the automotive space while CIP is in the civil infrastructure and SCD is also cooperating with, these, uh, with this project in LF. Um, they want to see that we also get their Linux in there. Here, always a topic we cannot mention often enough is the upstream part, the upstream work, because we want to get as many things upstream as possible and to increase the documentation. So we see that this is really a demand there. There's a lot of improvement possible here. And I guess the last point is also that we need to improve our internal development process. We have a lot of things written down, but they are not really structured. Their cross-tracing is missing. And especially for onboarding new people, we got a, quite a bunch of new people joining the working groups. They ask questions, we see repeating questions. So we know, OK, let's see here, how do we align that we have really a streamlined process and that people have an easier way into the community. Right, by this, um, these were the main activities. I can say we have a bunch to subscribe, so we have the mailing list. Uh, we have weekly meetings or, bi or fortnightly meetings. They are all open, so as soon as you subscribe, you get the invitation. Even the technical steering committee meeting is completely open. There you can also bring a concerns, discussion points, ask where to go best, where to put your use case. We also have the chance now to ask, and yeah, we. I love to hear your questions because uh, I reached already the end a little bit earlier, slightly ahead of time, but this gives us more room to ask some questions or get early into the weekend. Okay, thank you. I have the microphone here. If you have any questions. I'll pass the microphone to you. If there's no question, I have questions. I just want to ask who is from automotive in the room? Who brings an automotive background? That's oh, a few. What about medical? A little less. Industrial? Ah, nice. We want to have more inputs from the industrial work group, actually, and we just try to find to found one because uh, we see, especially due to the RT patches getting in, they're getting new use cases, right, where there's a first time and we can say, oh, we don't need the artist anymore. We could bring it in Linux and combine certain functionalities. So if you have a statement on this, we'll say, okay, I have some use cases which I'm able to share or I have an interest or I have a certain concern on this. 
We treat things completely different, though. That's why we will never use a safety-critical Linux or have no demand on this. It would be all interesting input because, uh, yeah, so far we look in the IEC 650 or 8 and into ISO 26262 mainly as safety standards, but not industrial also uses under standards. You may most likely share the same requirements and maybe not aware, maybe some things are different, but this is interesting. Typically requirements, traceability, design, implementation, traceability, all, the other, all are the same. And if you do a lot of things, this helps at least. So we also want to reach out to more industrial. Actually, the systems work group was intended to be an uh, industrial work group, but we put it on a wider footprint because there was not the quorum and not the, yet the outreach to say, oh yeah, let's, have drivers from the industry, industrial support. Cool. Yeah. Who's already using Linux already from the industrial space? <laughs> yeah, it's much less. So <laughs> maybe it's a good chance to give Linux a chance. Yeah. So. Anyone comes up with a question? Ah, one in the front. Uh, cool talk, thank you. Um, you said you're generating SBOMs for yes. Linux. Is that using like Yocto's features? Yeah, it's using the SPDX inherit uh, or inherit SPDX and SPDX Pretty, and the report is on the GitLab, so you can uh, download the it on a daily base. Uh, this is something which I haven't mentioned. We delete the images every day, but you can just go to like the artifacts within the GitLab pane. There's something to just download. We keep it fresh. So you get a fresh release every day, so as soon as a new feature, a new functionality gets in, it thing you will experience, and we also rebuild basically from scratch once a week, if I'm correct, that we also do the S state. We don't do? Every night. Every night, yeah, we build every night, but then we use the S state, and we cleaner the S state, yeah. the shared state, every week, because we said, well, maybe something happens, so we want to also make sure it works still. And the benefit of this we could already see, and this may be nice to see, um, we, our CI did not broke actually, but we did, was detecting errors twice, and one, I think the one we put back to AGL as an, as an error, and the second one was also interesting because well, everything was building, the system was booting, just the danger sign didn't show up because the certificate expired for the CAN stack. So this is something to keep in mind, and this is something which you can experience with the CI, and why it also makes sense to we come to a booting state, doing test cases, and we do this every night then. And it's not at all a safety critical work which we have done, or can be judged as safety critical, but should show best practices on how to do it. All right. There's one also in the back, and one in the room. Okay, thank you for your talk. Um, you only asked about industrial. What about home and building automation? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's an interesting topic, right? I guess for home and building automation, there are all sorts of hobby projects in there, right? Uh, actually, fire safety. <laughs> That's yeah. our industry. Ah, fire safety, yeah. Yes. Yeah, but I guess, I don't know, do you make use of Linux already? Yes, we use Yocto. Oh, cool. And you're, do you have certain, you, but do you have use really safety Integrity standard, or do you have actually also safety standards which tell you what conditions your system has to work on? I know this for toys, for example. They say don't work yes, on fire. Basically, basically both. We have like our own uh, European standard, the EN54, but for on an international scape, we also do safety integrity level. So, for example, for fire safety, usually you have SIL3. So oh, cool. We need to comply. Yeah, and you comply with this with completely with Linux, or you have additional elements in uh, your mind? Currently, we have like um, also other elements which are compliant, and uh, Linux, Yocto Linux, is just basically our cloud connectivity right. driver. So, but it would be nice to have like everything on Linux. Yeah, and I think it's, it, and this also shows like there's a way of you have a heterogeneous system with other things involved, and Linux is part of it. So it shows basically what we draw with the architecture and maybe also how you can get more responsibility to the system, like say if you enhance feature, reduce complexity by getting certain things out. Um, yeah, so it's a very good use case. Okay. If we Thank want to you. discuss more, feel free. And I guess there was another one a little more back. I don't know where it was. Ah, there. Um, yeah, I can uh, comment on the previous one. That, um, for uh, homes and passenger systems. Uh, I've done worked with the leading company for in Sweden for 
four years and made them start a Yocto, and they've done a great job. But uh, for industry, I work with, um, uh, I won't mention it, but uh, how they didn't want any security at all. They didn't even want uh, encryption on the devices because it wasn't connected to the internet. How do you make them realize that? I guess here it's once, at least one statement is uh, we need to split between security and the safety part, right? Because the security is the Obviously. like intrusion part. Um, the safety part goes more on where it could cause harm to people. Still, yes. I guess, um, so in our use case, it's more like the people are concerned that Linux is not safe enough yet to go and take over certain responsibility, especially for complex use cases. But I think you bring a very good point because this is something where you also need to consider how your environment change. And just to say, well, I don't care about all these kind of things because it's not in my primary use case. You never know when someone connect the USB printer to the router and it gets suddenly uh, and post to the internet because you just have an open connection in the router because there's some firmware mismatch and so when you get suddenly your spam mail comes out of the printer. Right? I, I get there are some prominent examples if you shut the web, so this is something to consider as well. And I guess it's just making it public, making things visible and point to these kind of things and say there are examples which show exactly this. And that's where we came from, right? 10 years back when we did our first device in infotainment in, from Bosch side, there was not that high view on um, security and we were not connected at all it was just the device but someone put the device out found the pins hacked the whole thing and was sharing this report on github to show okay here uh, I can get into the root shell um, I said very good you had a lot of effort actually you cannot do this because all the relevant functionality is hooked with an, uh, hooked by an artos and as soon as you change and flash a new Linux it doesn't work anymore but that's another story yeah. Yeah, and uh, I have a meeting on Tuesday with the automotive uh, part company, it's not, uh, yeah, it's automotive. And they already signaled that we don't need uh, uh, safety or, or uh, <laughs> cutting corners, everyone. Uh, so <laughs> how do you deal with that? It, it really heavily depends also on the use case, right? So it depends which device you do and if you, if you see our infotainment devices, which have a rear view camera in there, that normally you could say, well, the rear view camera is something safety critical because you need to see that the camera still operates. If a person is standing in the back of the car, a kid, a child, or whatever, you could cause harm to the person, damage the person, not only damage your car, that's just, I guess is the least problem. But what then comes in this like argumentation, this is not safety relevant for some people, building it because they just make this stadium. I don't know if you have ever seen this, some of you. Uh, please always look in the mirror and don't trust the camera. This is basically there to say, I have less responsibility for safety. Still, even if it's mentioned like this, it reduces the safety level, but the quality which you have to do is still there. So for example, we build in mechanisms to still identify that the camera is working, that it do what it should, not with a 100.000 percentage, but to a sufficient amount and adding this as a safety belt, like additional safety net for us to give just this information. And so there could be even some argumentation from other manufacturers who say, yeah, this is safety relevant. Others say it's not safety relevant. Heavily depends on the use case. Yeah, it's really heavy equipment, especially the first way. Uh, so it's, uh, it should be uh, critical if something goes wrong. Yeah. Okay, we are at the last minute, so we would have a chance for one more question. Otherwise, we just close the session. Thanks a lot to all of you staying until the end.